Joining me now in the studio to complete our series of conversations about the budget priorities of our state's caucus leaders is the House Minority Leader, Melissa Hortman. Welcome. Thanks for having me. At the February forecast, you said the projected surplus is good news, but we need to remember the condition of the state's assets. What assets are you most concerned about? Well, the infrastructure I'm thinking about are the roads and the bridges and the college and university system, but also our people, our assets. So we have to think about the investments we make in our workforce. Typically, Minnesota has a good track record of investing in education in both K-12 and higher education. And so when we look at the state's ability to be economically successful in the future, we, are, we only have that ability when we have a, a well-educated workforce. So the investments we make will determine whether we stay in that kind of top performing economic condition. When you look at Minnesota compared to other states, we're usually one of the top performers, but we can't count on that continuing unless we keep investing. So that, that brings up the topic of education, which is a question I have. Um, you've consistently spoken on the importance of college affordability. What are your caucus's goals, both for college affordability and also for the K-12 system? It seems everybody agrees more money should go in there, but, but what, where do you want it directed? Well, it's important when we fund the higher education system and we talk about something like a tuition freeze that we fully fund that. So it's one thing to say here at the, leg the legislature that we support a tuition freeze. It's, a, it's a, another thing entirely to give the money to the University of Minnesota and the state colleges and universities so that they really don't have to tap tuition. I think sometimes in the past, uh, different people have walked around saying they're for a tuition freeze but then they don't provide the funding so that the institutions can provide the level of service that students need without really increasing any student fees or costs. And what about K-12? Well, that's there? really important too. You know, the, the whole cost of K-12 is really wrapped up in people. And we know that it costs more for health insurance every year and inflation affects teacher salaries. So if we don't keep up with inflation, we're really not allowing our school districts to have the number of teachers that they need to have reasonable sized classrooms and deliver the services that all the children need. So in terms of assets, you also talked about roads and bridges. How would you like to see transportation funded? Well, you know, right now we have a surplus in the general fund and, and that's a little bit of accounting magic because right now we're counting inflation on the revenue side and we don't count inflation in all areas on the spending side. So if we did do that, we would actually have a deficit in the next two year period. Nobody wants to say that because it's some seriously unfun data. But the truth is we're about 200 million in the hole in the next biennium and then 1.1 billion in the hole in the out biennium if you count inflation. And I think we know with the Fed raising the interest rate that we are going to see a little bit more inflation and we should be taking inflation into account. So if we fund transportation with money that's already in the general fund, knowing that we're a little bit um, in the hole right now, we're, we're not really creating a secure stream of funding for transportation into the future. The way Minnesota's always done it, and there's a very few states who do it as responsibly as we do, is we have dedicated revenue to transportation. Because we know that when your local highway goes in competition with your local kindergartner, your kindergartner wins that budget fight every time. And so if we don't dedicate transportation revenues to transportation, we know when, when we get to tough budget times, we won't have enough to keep up. So it's dangerous to take money out of the general fund. It sounds like a good idea when we have a surplus, and we certainly can invest some of the surplus into roads and bridges, but we shouldn't count on that going into the future. So is that a gas tax, or are you in favor of some Republican proposals to tax auto parts and, and those types of sales, or where, where would you like that money to come from? Well, in the past, it's, it's come from um, revenue streams that are constitutionally dedicated to roads and bridges, like the gas tax and tab fees and the motor vehicle sales tax. Um, what the Republicans are talking about, the auto parts sales tax is not a new tax, but diverting money out of the general fund. Um, and so I don't think anybody would be in favor of increasing a tax on auto parts. That, to my um, understanding of what's going on, hasn't been discussed yet. But when you look at between tab fees, which the Republicans are considering, and the gas tax, I definitely prefer the gas tax because people pay it a little bit at a time. Tab fees is really tough. And then the amount of increase they're looking at in terms of tab fees, that hits somebody when they're writing their check out for their tabs. That's a big hit. So I don't think that that's the best way to do it. I don't think that's the most affordable. I think a, a more pay-as-you-go method is better. Well, and based on what you've been saying here, talking about the inflation and the 
in the budget forecast. It sounds like you're in agreement with Governor Dayton that a cautious approach is necessary going forward just because of the uncertainty and the length of the economic expansion that we've been in. Uh, so new spending, no new spending? I think we have to be cautious about that. I think the, the money that we would spend that would be above the base should be investments in people that we'll be glad that we made no matter what happens with the economy in the future. I, don't th I think we have to be cautious about how much we commit in new spending, though. The state has a healthy budget reserve, um, and then this projected surplus that maybe isn't so much as, as we think. Is there room for any tax cuts? Well, that's where the most caution should be in place. You know, I think it's important that just like when we look at spending, we look at kind of short-term use of the additional money, that we should look at short-term tax cuts. Like if we, ha if we do think that we should do some tax cuts, they shouldn't be tax cuts that persist on into the future. Just as with the spending, we should be really cautious about how much long-term spending we're dedicating. We know with the Trump administration that everything in Washington is going to change and probably change dramatically. We have no idea what the impact of these cuts, if, if the very conservative budget that's being discussed is enacted, the, the dramatic reduction in spending that will occur, we don't know what impact that will have on the U.S. economy. And so it's not really a good time to bank on um, rosy economic times going into the future. Representative Hortman, I want to thank you for coming today and come back again soon. My pleasure. Thank you.